Hi and welcome. It's Marcy again with part two of the Radar Opus Getting Started tutorial series. For those who might be interested, I just thought I'd mention that I've put my website here, marcymerns.com, on this first slide if you have any interest in one-on-one -on -one training. And before we get started, I just want to remind you that this is a really powerful software program. There are lots and lots of features. And my goal in this series is simply to give you a few steps to begin with a solid foundation. Your skills will grow as you practice and use the program. And just like the previous video, this one is broken into short segments. So please go ahead and pause the video after each segment so you can go ahead and practice on your own. All right, let's get started. So in this installment, we're actually going to do a little case. We're going to cover ways to find symptoms in the repertory, placing those symptoms or rubrics on clipboards, and we'll take a look at a simple analysis. I've selected a case here from Erastus Cases, Clinical Cases, 1898. And I'd like to encourage you to pause the video here for just a moment so that you can read through the case before we get started. Okay, the first symptom we're going to look at in this case is highlighted here, he will bite others if possible. Now, I recommend you ask yourself one question before going to the repertory. Do I know exactly where this symptom is found in my repertory? In this case, he will bite others if possible. That's our symptom. Do we know exactly where this is to be found in the repertory? Is it in the teeth chapter? Is it in the mouth chapter? Might it be in the mind chapter? If you're asking yourself these questions, then the answer to do I know exactly where this symptom is found in the repertory is either no or not sure. And as you can see, if your answer is no or not sure, then what I suggest you do is use the simple one word search. So that's what we're going to look at first. Now, if you know exactly where the symptom is found in the repertory, then you can go directly there. We'll talk about that in the next video. Okay. So here we are in Radar Opus, and let's take our attention up to the icon toolbar at the top. And you'll see that we have the simple search slot right here in the center portion of the icon toolbar. And this is where we can type a word that we would like to do a simple search on. Now, if you are a person who used to use the uh, old radar program, you probably recall the question mark search this would be the same search. And in fact, you can still use the question mark search in your Radar Opus program. But I like to use this simple search slot. I'll type the word we're looking for here. And as I type B-I-T-E, the list of words appears here. I'll use the Enter or Return key on my keyboard once to select that word, and a second time to complete the search. With our completed search, you'll notice that we have a new kind of information appearing here in the content zone on the left. And as well, we have a new results of search window here on the right hand side in the reading area. Let's take a closer look. First at the content area, which looks a little bit different than it did when we were using this as a table of contents for the program. I call this a dual duty zone because now this content area has become results of our search. So you'll notice that at the top of this list we have a list of repertories and each one of the repertories has a number in front of it. That tells us how many hits or how many times that word that we searched for, bite, appears in that particular book. And if we go down further down the list we'll notice that next we have all of our Materia Medica this would be all of our references, or what would have been Encyclopedia Homeopathica, all neatly lined up here with the number of results for the word bite listed just in front of the name of the book. You'll also notice that in our reading area we have a new window. 
this is the results of search window. You'll notice that the search tab here in the upper right hand corner has the icon for the little magnifying glass. That is our search icon letting us know that this is a results of search window. Listed in the results of search area are the results for the first book in our list of results here in the contents area. It just so happens that in my library the first book that gives a result for our search on the word bite is Bianchi's Repertory of Homeopathy and Homotoxicology with 13 rubrics which we see listed here in the reading area on the program. My core repertory that I like to use in my analysis is the Synthesis Repertory by Schroens. I'm going to go down then my list of search results here till I find my Schroens Synthesis Treasure Edition my program tells me I've got 469 mentions of the word bite and when I click on the title of that repertory here in the results of search or the content zone here in my reading area now opens up the listing of those 469 rubrics containing the word bite in my synthesis treasure edition. The first of those rubrics being mind anger with desire to bite the second mind biting and so on and so forth. So we have the chapter, the rubric, and the subrubric listed. You'll also notice that in parentheses the size of the rubric is listed here in our results of search in the reading area. All right, so we're looking at the results of our search for the word bite, and we're currently looking at the list of results from the Synthesis Treasure Edition. With a long list of search results like this, it's very often the case that you'll want to scroll through the list and select one or more rubrics to explore in the repertory before making a decision about which symptoms to use for your case. For the purpose of our little case though, I'm going to choose this rubric Mind Biting with 111 symptoms and when I mouse over the text of the rubric, I simply make a double click with my mouse button and the repertory will jump directly to that rubric. Here we are at our Synthesis Treasure Edition in the Mind Chapter, the rubric Biting with 111 remedies. Let's take a look at our analysis clipboards, or what I call the clipboard sandbox, located here in between the content area on the left and the reading area on the right. The easiest way to add a rubric from the repertory to any one of the analysis clipboards is simply by the drag and drop method. You'll notice when I mouse over the rubric here for mind biting that my cursor changes depending on where I'm pointing. When my cursor is poised over a remedy abbreviation, it becomes the little hand and as we've seen in our previous video, when I double click on any one of these remedy abbreviations with the little hand, it's going to open the remedy information window. Now when I point to the text of the rubric itself, in this case mind biting, you'll notice that the cursor is the little black arrow and what I can do from here is press and hold my mouse button while I'm mousing over the text of the rubric and as I keep my finger pressed down on the mouse button and drag that rubric to the rubrics clipboard here you'll see there's a little green arrow with a plus sign that lets me know that when I let go of my mouse button that rubric is going to be added to the clipboard. To open up that analysis clipboard all I need to do is click on the clipboard icon and a new analysis window opens up. Okay, let's get back to our case and see if we can locate additional rubrics to help this individual. Our next symptom is the red face. We're going to go ahead and use our simple search again and we can actually do that from anywhere in the program. I'll just go back and click my cursor here in the simple search slot 
and we're searching for that symptom face red. Again, I encourage you at the beginning to use just one word for the simple search. So in this instance, we're going to put in red, R-E-D. And when we see the list come up with the word we're looking for, I'm going to use the enter or return key on my keyboard two times. The program will perform the search. And our search results, you'll notice once again, that we always have the very first repertory appearing in the reading area. So the results from our very first repertory on the list, whatever happens to be in your program, that's what's going to show up first here in the reading area. But once again, what we want is the Synthesis Treasure Edition. So I'm just going to scan down my content list here. And I notice there's my synthesis with 1,607 results for the word red. And here are those rubrics. Now, the quick way uh, to get down to the face chapter is simply to scroll. I'm scrolling using my mouse. And the symptoms are listed in chapter order. So I'm going to go down through the eye chapter, vision. And we should be coming up on the face chapter here in just a moment. There we are. We have face discoloration red. And that's a big rubric there with 451 remedies. We'll mouse over the text and then double click. And there is the symptom face discoloration red. I'm going to point to the text of the rubric. And I'm actually going to drag this to a new clipboard. So this will be the second clipboard on my list here. And let go the cursor. I now have a symptom on each of two clipboards. In order to view my analysis window with both clipboards, I'm going to go to my top toolbar here and use the analysis icon or the analysis button. A simple mouse click on the analysis button will open up my analysis window now with both clipboards displayed. OK, let's go to the next symptom in our little case here. We've actually got two symptoms here. We have eyes shining, and we have pupils widely dilated. Let's look for these symptoms one at a time, starting with eyes shining. Once again, bearing in mind that we can do our simple search from anywhere in the program, I'm going to click in the simple search slot here in the icon bar, and I'm going to type in shining, enter, enter to perform that search. And here are my results. As usual, starting off with the very first repertory in my list, Bianchi's, displayed here in the reading area. But we want to go to the Synthesis, so I'm just going to go to Synthesis Treasure Edition here on my Content Zone. And now here in my reading area, I have a list of all of the rubrics in my Synthesis containing the word Shining. If I scroll down, I notice that there is a reference here for eye, shining eyes. I'll mouse over that rubric text, double click. The program takes us to the eye chapter in the repertory, but we'll notice that this is actually an empty rubric. And what we've been given are a couple of synonyms for shining eyes. The first is see brilliant, and the second see glassy appearance. Now when I mouse over those synonyms, again we see that the cursor turns into the little hand, which means this is a hyperlink. And let's go have a look at Brilliant. When I double click, my repertory jumps to the I chapter, the rubric Brilliant. And I am going to use that for uh, the first of our eye symptoms in this analysis. And let's put our eye symptoms on clipboard number three. OK, now you'll notice that we also have a hyperlinked cross-reference here for glassy appearance up just below the rubric I Brilliant. I'm going to go ahead and double click so that we can jump to I Glassy Appearance. And I'm going to add that to our clipboard three just for good measure. Let's have a look at our analysis now. So on our first clipboard, we have the mind symptom biting. On our second clipboard, we've got face discoloration red. And here on clipboard number three, we've got two rubrics 
for the eye symptoms, the brilliant and the glassy appearance, what we're missing are the dilated pupils. So let's go ahead and locate the rubric for the dilated pupils here in our simple search slot. We'll type in dilated, enter, enter to perform the search, and our list of results, synthesis repertory, 59 rubrics. This looks like a dandy rubric, eyes pupils dilated with 227 remedies. I'll mouse over the text and double click. There's the rubric in the repertory. Looks good to me. I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop that to my third clipboard, which is the one I've designated for my eye symptoms. Let's have a look at our analysis now. I'm going to go to the analysis button in the top icon bar. And when I press that analysis button, I have now have displayed all three of my clipboards. Okay, just a couple of final comments on our analysis graph for now. We'll go into this in more detail in the next tutorial. What I'd like to point out here is in the lower left-hand corner of my Radar Opus desktop, I have a button that says Hide the Table of Contents. Now when I mouse over and click that button, you'll notice that the content area is hidden and we have a full display of our analysis window. You may find that setting helpful if you've got larger rubrics here and you want to be able to see them in some detail. We often have questions about the order of the remedies here in our analysis graph. What I'd like to point out is that the order of the remedies depends entirely on the analysis settings that you use. I like to use the analysis selector that's located down here in the lower center of my screen. It's currently set for sum of symptoms sorted degrees and when I click on the little arrow selector on the right hand side, I'm offered the option of other analysis settings. So just to, just to demonstrate here, if we select small remedies for example, you'll notice that the remedy display here changes substantially. Let's flip back to sum of symptoms sorted degrees. That's the setting that I generally use. We'll go over these settings in more detail in the next tutorial.